really, it's kind of fascinating, the whole fruit fly concept. Science videos, unless they're made like by, say, the Amoeba Sisters, <laughs> science videos have a tendency to be dry if you're really looking at the experiment. Um, and, and I don't want to turn you off to this concept because of a dry video. It is, I'm going to be honest, that was kind of dry, but it was a really good recap of what actually was happening. So while I'm going to sit here and talk about what was happening, it might make more sense now having that background. So this is Thomas Hunt Morgan, and he had a fruit fly lab. And fruit flies, I think, are about the most annoying, them and gnats, about the most annoying organisms. But they are really good to work with for genetics because they only have four chromosomes. Makes them pretty simple. Um, so Drosophilia melanogaster, that's their scientific name. Thomas Hunt Morgan discovered the whole idea of linked genes way back in 1910. So that's interesting because that's before we even know, knew that DNA was the genetic material. So linked genes are inherited together because they're on the same chromosome. So this isn't, this is separate from sex links trait. This is saying any chromosome carries a set of genes. Um, and so they will be inherited together. And here's an example of a gene set carried on a single chromosome. So whatever form of antenna, whatever body color, whatever hair color, whatever shape of wings, all of that is gonna be inherited together because it's found on one chromosome. And you can recognize whichever you know, gamete that one chromosome goes into, that's going to affect the, the genotype of the offspring. And it's going to take with it all of the genes that are found on it because they're physically found on it. Okay, so that's the whole idea behind it. Now, sex link traits can, are just referring to that 23rd chromosome. So every single one of these chromosomes has a linked set. But sex link traits operate a little bit differently because, um, because we don't both have two sets of that chromosome, right? So that's why they act a little bit differently. So we're going to look at them differently. The other 22 chromosomes, I'm not sure if we've said this before, they're called autosomes. So all your um, one through 22 that code for traits that everybody has, um, that is our autosome. And then 23, you either have the X version or the Y. It's a little short guy behind that sign. Um, that is your 23rd chromosome. So the X carries a certain set of traits. The Y carries a different set of traits and only males will receive that set of traits because the female doesn't get the X chromosome. And this is the um, gene or this is the chromosome that determines your gender, okay? So females, we, because they have two Xs, they're guaranteed to pass on an X because a male has an X and a Y, 50-50 chance every single sibling you have, 50-50 chance they're gonna get an X and 50-50 chance, they'll get a Y. So they're going to inherit whatever genes are on that X, or they're going to inherit whatever genes that are on that Y. One of those being the SRY gene, which is what triggers testosterone to be released and starts the male form around week seven. So initially, we're all physically female. And if you have the Y chromosome, um, you also have the SRY gene that starts that cell specialization that changes your anatomy from female to male. So that's pretty interesting, I think. Um, so the 23rd pair, that's what determines whether you're gonna be a boy or a girl. You can see the um, male, the Y. Remember these are two homologous chromosomes stuck together, or two sister chromatids stuck together. So it's act, none of these are actually X's. Chromosomes exist as individuals. And then they've made copies because of interphase and synthesis. So a female will have two sets, an X from mom and an X from dad. And, dad, and, and a male will have two different ones, an X from mom and a Y from dad. Okay, so he won't inherit any of the X genes that his father has. 
So our understanding of sex link traits came from Thomas Hunt Morgan, which you just watched a video on, and it had to do with the fruit flies. So he saw um, fruit flies typically come with red eyes, and you would refer to that as the wild type because that's the kind you find in nature. That's the original form. So when he bred the two, um, he would only get red eyes, but then um, he watched long enough and he found some white-eyed males. That was odd, right? So that was a mutation. The gene had changed. Mutations are random changes in the genetic code and they're bound to happen. Okay, so now you have a white-eyed male just out of random mutations. So now he's gonna cross that with the red-eyed female. Notice all of the offspring are red-eyed, whether they're male or female. And, and they said that this is exactly what Mendel would have expected, right? Let's make it analogous to the purple flower and the white flower and all the offspring were purple. So this let us know that the red form of the gene is dominant over the white form of the gene because there's no white children. So then he took the F1 generation that inside the box, he took them and bred them with each other. So he took away the parent genes um, and then he was only working with that one set. So what he got was a three to one ratio, which is what you would expect when we did the purple and white flowers. Remember when we crossed the purple purple, we got a three to one, but the white eye only ever showed up in the males. It didn't show up in the females. So this is that three to one ratio. So we had the red-eyed male, the red-eyed female. And when we crossed, we got the expected three-fourths red and one-fourth white. But never did he get a white female in this round of mating. He only ever got the male. So he said there must be something that connects that gene to the X chromosome. And because the female has two sets of Xs and inherits dad's dominant red gene, females were guaranteed to show that dominant red gene. The males we know don't receive dad's X chromosome and receives the mom. So looking at just the males, it would make sense. Mom's either gonna give the big R or the little R. It's a 50-50 split. And then sure enough, the males had a 50-50 split. So this is the background on how we got to know what we know. The why, carries no um, gene related to eye color. So we're not going to worry about linking a gene to this Y. So to show linked genes, we take the original chromosome and we're going to superscript the allele. So this is showing you that the, the R gene is physically connected to the X. The Y doesn't have a, a gene for this trait that we're currently following. So it has no superscript, okay? So to properly write sex link traits, you have to both indicate the gender, XX or XY, as well as superscript on the X only. That is the allele that you're following. Eventually he got a white-eyed female and he crossed that and he got the reverse order of the original cross. So he concluded that the eye color is um, red eye is dominant over white, and he also included or concluded that it was inherited with the X chromosome. So here's looking at the different genotypes a female could have, right? She could be homozygous dominant. The W stands for wild type, which means the original form of the gene. And, um, and so she can be homozygous dominant. She can be heterozygous in which case she still has at least one dominant allele. And as long as you have one dominant allele, that trait will show, or she can be homozygous recessive. And if she's recessive, then you need two recessive alleles for it to show. So really the female has a one in three chance, whereas the male has a one in two chance. So right there alone, just based on the versions of genotypes, the male has a greater chance at showing a recessive trait. This is only with recessive traits, right? Um, so we can see he can have the dominant allele or he can have the recessive allele, but whatever he has is guaranteed to show. So we just refer to these as sex link traits. Eye color is one example, as is colorblindness and hemophilia and a few other things.
before we look at our homework, what questions do you have? The worksheet that I have for you is all about uh, sex link traits. So um, this first part, you're just identifying the gender and the color of eyes, right? So if it's XX, it's going to be what gender? You can shout it or chat it if you're nervous. Yes, that is female. And is that are she going to have red or white eyes? Red. Excellent. Okay, so that's all you do with that one. The next one is properly writing genotypes. So this is a white eyed male. So let's start with writing the XY version. Okay, so XY, that makes it a male. Now, am I going to superscript on the X, the Y, or both? X. Yes, I'm only going to superscript on the X. And because he has white eyes, which is recessive, I'll use the little r. Now, I'm going to highlight my little r, and I'm going to hit Control, and I'm going to hit my greater than sign, and that's going to superscript. So I'm just doing one of each of these here. So remember, when we form um, our, our Punnett squares, you're basically going to open up your, your genes, right? So this is one allele. And this is the other. And I can just copy that to make my life easy. So I'm going to put that in for the female. OK. And the same thing for the males, right? So when you separate these out, this forms one sperm. And this is the other sperm. OK, so because superscripting is difficult, I'm just going to copy paste that. That makes my life a little bit easier. And the Y. Then you're going to treat this just like a monohybrid cross, bring these letters down, bring these letters across. Okay. Okay. So sometimes, so you're going to be looking at traits sometimes differently. So pay attention if it's asking for the percent of children, in which case you look at all four, or does it say the percent of males, in which case you only look at two. So one out of two is 50% rather than one out of four. Okay. So that's a quick tour of what the worksheet looks like. What questions do you have? 